Okay, thank you, Karen, for joining us today. And um, we are uh, very fortunate to have you. Karen is from the Torpedo Art Factory. She works there, she has a studio there. And um, it was Susan Reichbart, who our membership chair, who recommended you. And she said, you've got to see her work and just, you know, she, she was very instrumental in me connecting with you. <clears throat> now the thing, yeah, so anybody, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat box and I will read it out to Karen and uh, she will explain her process. This series is funded by a grant from the Commission on the City of Fairfax Commission on the Arts. And this is the last and final series for this uh, uh, FAL year. So it's all yours, Karen. Okay, thank you. And thank you very much for inviting me. It's uh, an honor to uh, show my, my uh, technique and my methods. And I want to warn you that I don't always succeed. So just bear that in mind. Uh, probably, you know, 50% of my paintings, I may not like that much. And so I turn it upside down and use those paint layers as more texture for my next painting. And sometimes that that does the trick. So I will do my best to, uh, I, I'm trying to show you every step of my process. And I thought that I would um, show you first uh, around my studio and some of my paintings and to see what I try to achieve. And so bear with me while I take this down. So I want to make sure you can see some of my paintings. Is that, does that work? Yes. Okay. Does it work for and, everybody? I mean, if anybody has issues, please let me know, okay? And, you know, I, I really, this is one of the paint overs that I was talking about where I didn't like the painting. It just, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't great. And so I turned it upside down and use those old paint layers to add more paint and more texture um, to the final. Here's one where I have an underpainting. Let me make sure you can see it. Um, I have an under, my underpainting I used as my painting in the painting. So I just framed my underpainting and left it as is. And I'll show you what I mean by my, my underpainting. And I really am into uh, patterns. Um, I like the abstract nature of my underpainting with very detailed um, you know, patterns in my paintings. And I'm going to do one today. Here is a, here's another painting where you can, uh, let's see, make sure it's in the screen. Can you see the, yes. the, yes. this area? This mm -hmm. is part of where I let my underpainting show with just thin layers of paint. And also, you know, here with the, the window, uh, you see the underpainting uh, peeking through. And I, I do that with the use of a palette knife versus a brush to make sure that the underpainting is not covered up. So that just gives you uh, a, an idea. This is one of my underpaintings. Uh, can you see it? Um, yep, there we go. Uh, this is one of my underpaintings before I've done my final composition. And so uh, once I leave you, I'll probably start on that one. But I wanted to show you, uh, my underpaintings all look very different, but they're all very colorful and they have um, a lot of primary colors in them. And they're, they look very messy, but what that allows me to do is have those uh, colors peek through in the final product. All right, I'm gonna put you back on the stand. And we'll get started. So uh, the first thing I do is I add a gesso and not just any gesso, but a, uh, ultra uh, professional gesso. And I just, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but uh, this is a very thick 
paste. It's not like your typical gesso that you brush on. Uh, and what I do is I use this large palette knife and I put um, the gesso on in thick layers and I leave ridges. And I don't necessarily cover the whole canvas, but I want the I want the texture. I want it to be thick because uh, that allows me to add markings, and it highlights the color of my underpainting. I would say I'm very much into. I'm a colorist, but I. I, I, when I don't add the gesso layer, I almost feel like my painting is flat. And so you can see it's very, whoops, see, mistakes are good. It's good. We add to the final product. All right, that'll give you a sense. Let me just get some in this corner. And then I start once once it's covered sufficiently for my purposes, I add marks in it. Maybe it needs a little more up here. All right. And then I have a, a tool that's very simple. Uh, it's a comb that I got at the online on Amazon and I use it to make markings through the gesso while it's still wet. And this just adds some textural interest. And if I don't, if I feel like it's too much, then I can always take some out. And I do that and then I let it dry for 24 hours. And then I can work on my underpainting once it's dry. So very simple. My mother is a professional artist and she always used gesso for her large canvases. And so I kind of, why not borrow from your mother? So that's what I, I love the texture that comes from the heavy gesso. I made a few mistakes uh, when early on when I was buying gesso and I, it was the wrong kind. It just it didn't achieve the effect that I wanted. So trial and error. I found the Ultrek Professional Gesso. I used heavy molding paste and I didn't feel like it, uh, the paint adhered as well um, to the heavy molding paste. So Gesso is my favorite. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside because I can't do anything with it for quite some time. And I have a painting that I've already gessoed. And I put one coat of Indian yellow hue, fluid acrylic, just to get a start because um, I, I, I have to wait between layers and I didn't want to have you wait watching me do this. So now I'm going to do an underpainting and there's not a lot of magic to my underpainting, but I want to get all the white covered. If I want to put white back into my painting, I'll do it deliberately, but I want all of the canvas white to be covered because I don't want it to draw the eye. So I use uh, fluid acrylics and 
I use, oftentimes I use either a palette knife or a brayer to put my colors on and I do it It is deliberate. Um, I know that I, I am going to be painting my subject. I forgot to tell you that I keep a, a notebook and I work on it pretty much every night. And it has all of my thumbnail sketches that I work on and I test my compositions and I maybe jot down some color ideas. And then once I have an idea of what the painting I want to do, then I do a color study like this uh, on a you know watercolor pad just to test my colors together. When I don't do that is when I make mistakes, and sometimes I you know end up painting over it. But uh, this is a good way of of making sure that your colors are going to be complementary and and there's going to be balance in the painting. So my underpainting, you can be deliberate, you know, have light colors underneath the dark areas and darker colors underneath the lighter areas. Um, and you can think about that while you're doing your underpainting. I think I'm going to put my my darker color over here. And so I'm going to put lighter colors over here. And you'll notice I'm not mixing colors. I'm putting directly from the bottle. Um, I don't care at this point about I, I want that pop of color. I'm almost out of this paint, obviously. That's not good. Huge fan of red. And I might use this tool. To get more spread and then go into the yellow. All right. I think we need more red somewhere else. I hope I have enough. This is high roll red. I like using the liquid acrylic for my underpainting. You'll see at the end of the day that I, I have a lot of paint on the painting. So it's a fairly expensive way to paint is to have this, this much layering, but it's worth it to me. All right, let's try some. I'm gonna do a little bit of paint. Um, say I put it on directly, but I don't want this dark. I'm going to make this a little lighter. Cobalt turquoise with a little white. All right, one more. Okay. So the grooves here are from the, you know, the tool marking in the, in the gesso. And I want to make sure that that gets color. And I'm going to use A 
fluorescent color. Don't scoff. It really does pop into the grooves of those marks. Sometimes it gets a little muddy when you try to go too fast, but I'll always, I, I can always go in afterwards. I spend a lot of time on my uh, underpainting. I might do the first pass and then go back and go into the other colors. Um, I off, oftentimes use a stencil to make stencil marks in, in just random places. That oftentimes gives me a unique effect in the final composition. But like I said, I really try to get into those grooves so we don't have white showing. And I'm not going to do this whole um, canvas because I want to go on to the one that I've already I've already done in underpainting to show you how I do the final composition. I use a combination of paints. Um, I use both heavy body uh, paints and I use uh, liquid acrylics, fluid acrylics, and then high flow fluid acrylics that are very transparent. Um, which allows me to, you know, unify the underpainting, but still let it show. So I really like to, it, it, if that makes any sense. And you'll all, all, all um, you'll see that I don't use a brush that often. Um, I use a brush when I want to uh do detail work and when i'm feathering uh feathering in color but i really love the use of the palette knife the only problem is sometimes it gets i have too many hard edges so i have to be very deliberate about making sure that i have both hard and soft edges all right there's some fluorescent orange or for for uh, red fluorescent red now all of this is it's not going to stay fluorescent i don't I'm not going to have a fluorescent painting but it will um, be somewhat dramatic in the final composition it'll peek through and i do the underpainting in the Indian yellow because it's easier to cover the cover the white when I do one one base base color that's somewhat neutral. All right, this may be my favorite color if if I have one. I think it's very soothing. And that is why I have paint all over my floor. I'm inside a Jackson Pollock lover. That's what my floor looks like. Now, I may have gone overboard with the teal because a lot of my underpainting is going to be in the blues. And so I should probably focus on colors that are a good contrast. Here's a
Okay, now that's my first mistake. I, when I get too close to the red, it browns it out, of course. If I would just slow down, paint a little at a time, but I'm incapable of doing that. I like to paint fast. I occasionally do um, a, an abstract painting as my underpainting. So I'll worry about the composition and you know the values and the colors. Uh, for this, I'm just uh, I'm just putting on paint that I think will uh, complement my final paint layers. All right, you'll see when I did that, use the brayer, it sh showed uh, the, the markings that I made. And I really enjoy, I really enjoy the final, final effect. All right, I need some pink. My water is getting very muddy, but I'm not gonna change it out until we go to the next phase. I think we need some blue, not too much blue. You know, I changed my mind. I think we need some orange, some real orange, or in this case, cadmium red light. Oops, there we go, Getting muddy. All right. All right, I think you get the drift. Um, I covered the painting, make sure you get all the white out. Um, and I try to think about what's gonna go over in terms of my composition so that it's a, a contrast that will work well. So I planned this out so that um, you wouldn't just see this part of it, but this is a, a fundamental part of what my final painting will be. If I didn't have this, like I said, I think it would be pretty flat. All right. This is an underpainting that I did the other day. And it's wild, wild colors. All right, so let's get started by, I, I do a very quick sketch using charcoal. And you can see all the, all the markings that survive 
here and here adds a lot of movement to the final painting. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is you'll you'll notice, or I will admit that I don't I don't care about you know the it being perfect or the perspective. What I want is a, a quick kind of uh, quick take. And I think I will have, have, have my flowers here. So some of this leg will not be seen. And my flowers go up here. Uh, um, Karen, is this some particular kind of charcoal? This is vine charcoal. It's very soft. And I'll show you what I use. It's willow, willow charcoal. Okay. Okay. And, you know, if I, if I um, erase too much and it gets all muddy, then I just take a paper towel with a little water and I uh, go over it so that uh, I don't have this mess. Some most people would tell you, you know, be careful at this stage so you don't make a mess, but I am incapable of that. I, I like to work fast, so it's very organic to use a overworked word. Do something like that. And I think that I'll, we're just going to do my pattern over here, but I think I'll do my pattern over here. Okay. So, you know, I, you, you probably think this is really simple and that's the whole point. I want something as a very simple homey subject that is all about the texture and color. Um, occasionally, I will do something with a lot of patterns and a whole scene, but I really, for I really enjoy doing very simple, simple sketches that really emphasize the color and the instead of thinking about what you're looking at, you're thinking about the color and the and the shapes. Okay. So uh, let's start with, I, I like to work around the canvas, of course, as you know, people will tell you that's the way to go. So you can test your colors. I think I'm gonna use some viridian green. Viridian green. And again, I'm using uh, liquid acrylics, but I, for my main area, I'm gonna use heavy acrylics and it gives that contrast. Um, the other thing you should know is I use both matte uh, paints and uh, gloss paints. And it gives that kind of two dimensional effect that I really like. All right, that's not green enough for me. So, let's see. Okay. 
Well, I'm going to add some yellow. Yeah, that's a pretty color. I might use my, my grayer. And it needs to be a little lighter than that. Oh, it's that lime, lime green in places over the darker. Too easy to stand up. Right, it's covering up a lot, which I don't necessarily want to do. So let me take a might rub off some so that you can still see the underpainting. Usually when I'm doing this, I have my 60s and 70s music on and it gets me going. All right, I'm going to come back to this for now. I'm thinking that I like this yellow from the underpainting, uh, and I'm going to keep it that way. So, what I might do is add a liquid um, fluid acrylic. Too dark. And some more of this viridian, lightened viridian. Very lightly, almost make it translucent. Now, I, I always try to think about my light source. I'm gonna have a dark, my darks over here. So I may, instead of keeping this dark, I may make it lighter all right 
and then my charcoal starts getting in the way. So I kind of may take it off a little. All right, and they have to come back to this. I like that color. I think that'll be nice. This needs to be a little darker down here. And at the bottom. And again, I don't want all of my underpainting to be covered up, but All right, now this is, needs to be a, this is where details get in my way. You know, it's not flat that we have to round it out a little. All right. All right, I'm going to darken up some of the flowers with my uh, I want Brittian, I want Jenkins green. I'm going to add a little contrast in the flowers so that it's dark in places. All right. Doesn't look like much now, but hopefully it will. All right. Let's move on to maybe I blue, blue, green on the table. Got a little yellow in there. All right. Yellow is going to be my mother color. That needs to be a little lighter. I'll just come in. This is what I love about acrylics. Mixing the paint on the canvas. I think we need a little
I'm sitting here holding the white paint. I don't need to do that. Okay. Padma, you're going to tell me uh, how we're doing with time. I, I take it. Oh, yes, definitely. It's 11.46 now, Karen. Okay, I have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll go until 12.15 and then uh, 15 minutes people can ask and talk or whatever. I'm feeling a little pressure to, to actually have something that's, but maybe I shouldn't worry about that. No, no. You're going to see very abstracted and that's the way I like it anyway. Then that's when I noticed that my charcoal is like curving up, which a table would never do. I can always fix those things later, right? So you probably think that I, I never look for precision, but I do. It's just that I do it later. And I bring my trusty, trusty square out. This is what I should have done in the first place. I just do a, a mark to get my there we go. So I've got the general idea. I'm going to come back to the table later. Not sure that's what I want. So I want to introduce you to some of my favorite paints colors that I, I use. It's the high uh, high flow acrylics, and this is nickel azo yellow, and it's just gorgeous when uh, applied over paint layers. And I'll show you what I mean. So it doesn't cover it up, but it adds that gold. Now, I shouldn't have gone that high because I'm going to put my darks over there. I just want it down here. And if I wanted it a little lighter, I can mix in a little white to give. That effect, but I don't want to cover up too much of my underpainting. I like I like that color in various places. Put more the ace of gold over. Let it around. colors. The white's not transparent, of course, so if you put on white, you're going to cover up more. So if you want to leave it transparent, that might be the way to go. This is a little too much for me. I'm going to kind of take it off a little bit. Tones it down, though. I have a little left over on my brayer. So my other color that I love is the, I don't know how to pronounce it, quinacridone uh, nickel azo gold. So one is yellow and one is gold. 
use this as my bottom of my table. Using your imagination of what a table should look like. Love that color. Put that up here. I didn't like the light. And I put it where it's heavy in some places, not heavy in others. The whole goal here is not to have perfection, it's to have uh, some textural interest. And you'll notice things like that. I'm going to be, you know, polishing this up um, at the end, but I want to work my way around the canvas to make sure that my color choices are right. Although I have already done a, a small color study. Put some over here. Green. I might keep some of the underpainting here. Is a lot into the underpainting, so see what that um, fluorescent color really shows through, but it's it's toned down. Leaving it a little rough, which is the way I like it. Too many tools in my hand. All right. And obviously, Go in. Up at the table, we'll have a mixture of blue and that gold. It's almost a red color. I don't, it's called nickel gold, but. And then I might think about a little leg here. This needs a little more. Brownish red here. Almost turns green. And going back to the table. probably do the, obviously I'm gonna have to finish that later. I wanna move on. Yeah. I kind of clean as I go or undo as I go when I need to. I think I'll use a sepia color for my chair legs. 
but I may want to put a little yellow in here. Oh, there we go. Want a little lightness in this area. And I get a little lightness in this area. Leaving a lot of that. All right, sepia, back to sepia. Oops. What happens when you go too fast? So I don't want this to be too dark. So what I do is I'm gonna put it on, let it sit for a few minutes or one minute. And then wipe it off. Give a little curve to the chair. All right, then I take my lightly brush it off. There we go. Okay, 15 minutes. This is like speed painting. So I think. I want to use a darker, darker blue. This is a phalo blue um, green shade. And where did I put my thing? Can't find it. Um, I'm going to put some darker tones in the chair and then lighter tones over it. Um, I want my other tool. Where is it? And the high flow acrylics, as you see, you know, allow that uh, underpainting to show through. But I'm going to cover up parts of it when I um, when I put my lighter tones. All right. Like okay, that. We have a question, Karen. All right. Okay. So Can I keep said, working while I answer? Sure, sure. Yeah. So the question is Are the colors on the color study that's before making the real thing from colors right out of the tube or are they mixed? I, um, I'm, I have mixed certain colors in here, uh, but this is right out of the tube. Um, you know, I wanted the dark color. I'm going to be mixing the lighter tones that go on top. So I, I, I choose which ones. I didn't want to mix too much because I didn't have the um, transparent version of the white to lighten this up. Uh, and so I don't want to cover, I want to use the more transparent colors uh, for my chair so that I can get the underpainting tones. Uh, to peek through. So you have to be careful when you mix that you mix transparent with transparent if you want to stay transparent. And you'll see in a minute. Does that answer the question? I hope. Um, is it answered, Susan? Yes, she says yes. Now I'm dripping. That's the only bad part about using the high flow is it's you have to stay on top of it because it will go everywhere. But 
I don't believe in mistakes. I think you can always fix things. So this is really dark down here because it's the blue over the orange, of course. So I'm gonna lighten, I'm gonna use, talking about mixing colors, I'm gonna take some the manganese blue hue with uh, white. And some turquoise, uh, teal, I should say. And I wanna put this on not in a thick layer because I don't wanna cover everything up, but I want to have it be an overlay. You see what I mean? Where the dark is still showing through. Oh, yeah, you know, I the stupid thing in my hand and I'm so intent on getting it on the canvas, but there we go. Oh, and I think I might put, um, Can you do, uh, Karen, oh. the internet is sort of stopped. Well, I might add in some. Karen? Karen? Are we okay? Um, okay. No, your, no, your phone changed its orientation. Ah, uh, I don't know why. Yeah. Is it back? Should I? Okay, hold on. For a brief moment, we lost connection with you. All right. Are you? Are we back? We are back, but uh, your uh, your orientation has changed. It. Uh, you were. Yes. Yes. So now it's vertical, but it looks better. Okay. Yeah, it's thin up, so, but it's okay. Mm. I'm sorry about that. I don't know. It has the mind of its own, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I want some the darker, darker blue down here. So I think I'll take some of the phthalo. Real jewel tones. Put it down here. And this is more of my mixture. And I think I'm gonna use this same color over here. And I'll finish this later. I think I've got the idea of the chair. Um, still have to do the flowers. How are we doing on time? I have 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think I don't, I want the thicker paint heavy duty paint for my flowers. So I'm gonna add some yellow and white and some nickel azo gold. I can find it. There we go. 
And I'm going to bring my brush out finally. First time. I was wondering about that. <laughs> uh huh. I use a palette knife a lot. I, I did use a, a brush to do the first coat of the underpainting. I use these, uh, except for detail work, I use these big flat brushes. Um, another thing my mom taught me, they're, they're great. They do, you know, for broad uh, brush strokes and a lot of uh, movement. They're wonderful. But for this, the flowers, I'm using this big boy. And this is my mixed yellow, nickel, gold, and Patium that I want. I want it on my brush very thick. And I'm going to do some swirls. And maybe some. darker areas around. And I think we need some uh, spend most of my time searching for my paint. I'm going to do some cadmium red light and yellow together. Or the other flowers for you know. So that's the only color in here that's very All right. And what I might do is I might come in with an acrylic pen and do markings to make it very abstract after this dries. All right. Five more minutes. Feeling yeah. the pressure. Feeling <laughs> the pressure. All right. I'm going to put some more of this. Oh, what am I using? I'm using this brush, but I don't really want to. All right. Back to my Boy, is my water dirty. Usually I have to walk down the hall with my with my water. This is transparent, but it's because it's over. So I really want to leave this, you know, abstract underpainting in places. And what I'm going to do on this side, and I won't get to it uh, for you is I'm gonna do a, um, a pattern. And that's when the detail work um, starts. And let me just show you before I take questions. Um, going back to my sketch, it really needs to dry, is I'm going to, uh, on this part, I'm going to do, uh, 
uh, like a floral pattern with different colors so that you have both the color here and the color here. I really like the way that this complements this, um, but peeks out in terms of, so I'll have, to, I'll have to make more definition here and work on my table. I don't really like my table. I think that's kind of a flat color. Um, I love this. I think this is beautiful. So overall, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to uh, do something down here, maybe with more of, of this color um, down there. But overall, I'm happy with it. Very nice. But it yeah. dev devil's in the details. So anyway, um, do we, is this a good time for questions? Yeah, it is. Um, you, uh, please re unmute yourselves and you can all, um, uh, I mean, start, fire some questions at Karen. Hi, Karen. I, I think what you, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I think what, you, what you're doing is amazing. It, it's, it's like there's a method to the madness. <laughs> uh, and, 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 I, and I, it's, it's so wonderful how you seem to know exactly where you're going throughout the whole exercise, I guess. But my, so I'm an oil painter, but I am impressed uh, with so many, like how many different types of um, acrylics do you use? Because you were like, I use um, high flow for something, opaque for some others. Y you know, like, it's just like, how many do you use? I, I can't hear. No. It, you're muted. You're muted for some reason. Yes. I'm muted. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question was, do I use a lot of different paint? And the answer is yes. Um, I love high quality paint, but uh, because of how much paint I use, sometimes I use the cheaper, you know, uh, golden, although golden is not exactly cheap, but I use golden uh, for my underpainting and the, it, it's the best high flow paint that I, I found. Um, the high end paint that I use is the whole bind. It's like butter. It's wonderful. Um, it almost has the consistency of the oil paint. Um, I also use the whole bind matte, which I love. It really makes, um, uh, it makes the, if you do it, use it on you know your main center focus of the composition uh it really pops because it's matte and the rest is gloss uh so i i really like that i do not varnish my paintings um based on recommendations from the smithsonian about you varnish oil paintings but acrylic paintings uh not so much so anyway i yes i use a lot of different kinds of paint and I spend a lot of money on them, but it to me it's worth it uh, because, as you say, it's it's uh, it's messy, but it allows a lot of uh, of textural interest in my in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had another question. Do you ever work in uh, smaller canvases? Um, I I do. I don't enjoy it as much. I like working large, maybe because I am, I'm very gestural. There's a lot of movement in my painting and it's, it's harder to get that in a smaller canvas, but I do because uh, I can't just paint big all the time. So yes, I have, you know, uh, 24 by 30. I have, um, you know, small uh, 20 by 20s. Um, I have all, all sizes and I work on paper as well. Uh, 22 by 30 uh, archival, uh, you know, uh, 300 pound paper. And I use the same technique. I use the same gesso. It's very, I have a lot of texture on my paper. Um, so. Mm -hmm. So you cover your paper with gesso. And I do. Dry, and then. Yeah. 
succeed exactly with your with your study. Yes. And, you know, uh, most framers would say you frame with glass on top of paper, but I'm going to start uh, testing out framing without uh, glass on top because it, it really takes away from the whole texture uh, when you put glass on top, in my view. But most framers uh, rebel at that because of, they want to preserve the paper. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions? Can I can I ask you? I mean, if no one else is, <laughs> I might no ask you the advantage, right? So, um, so so do you? The, as far as color theory, right? Do you do you go like okay, my shadows? If my shadows are cool then I want to put a warm color under so and then the cool the cool color on top so you know like that that kind of thing like how how does that work I'm I... right so so when I do my underpainting uh if if I'm good I will um do what I did for this and I will you know I will do a color study and I will think well I want some warm colors underneath the cool colors here because it will show more you know and i want lighter hues underneath uh for my underpainting underneath this area but sometimes i just want i just do a, an abstract and i don't think about i don't even know at the time what um composition i'm going to uh have and my abstract underpainting may influence my composition and my uh, color choices for the final for the final draft. But yes, I, I think about that. I think about and sometimes when I do my composition and I realize that my color choices in my underpainting are not going to work, then I will go in and just put yellow uh, on top of the old um, underpainting so that I I can achieve what I want to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, I could save myself a lot of work if I just planned ahead, but that takes away some of the spontaneity, um, which is what I, I think is a secret to my success, uh, is, is painting uh, very intuitively and, and with a lot of uh, free gesture. And so mm -hmm. I'm of two schools of thought. <laughs> No, the, the oh. reason I asked that question is because it just looks so good. Like your color choices. It's well, I kind of like they look like you pull them out of your head, but it cannot be. It has to be that there's some logic behind it. There's some logic. I mean, I I have this sounds egotistical, but I have some color sense. Um, and you know, uh, my drawing is not that great. Uh, there are other aspects of my paint painting that are not that great, but my color choices, I'm usually pretty good at figuring it out. I do like to uh, do the test run because sometimes I get it wrong. Um, but this way I knew, I knew that would work. Um, it's very balanced and, but it still has both cool and warm, which I like. And, you know, I, I don't go to the color wheel and say, I'm going to do this. Because uh, sometimes you want to break rules. And, but sometimes it doesn't work, too. So it's, in, it's you have to go with instinct sometimes. Right, right. Awesome. So what size is this canvas, Karen? This is 40 by 40. This oh. would be, for me, on the small side. Uh, oh. You know, I, I have a 48 by 60 is probably on my larger size. I love 48 by 48. Uh, I get a, most of my sales are large. Um, I have people who want to have, you know, their walls filled and they have these modern, uh, modern condos. And so I sell a lot uh, of my larger pieces, mm -hmm. which is the other reason why I don't paint small all the time because, you know, I'm, do you, I'm selling, do you selling these? Do you vanish uh, your painting afterward? 
I don't. That's what I was saying. I I went to the Smithsonian for advice on that, and um, one reason I don't is because my mom taught me this. She's been painting professionally for sixty years, and she said, um, "Don't keep around paintings that you don't absolutely love. You know, build a portfolio and make sure that uh, you have uh, expert or you know uh, wonderful paintings." and paint over the ones you don't like. So I, I live with my paintings for a while, and then if I don't like them, I paint over them so that I only have the cream of the crop in my studio. And um, uh, your que now I've gone off on a tangent. What was your question? Oh, varnish. Varnish. Yeah. I can't, if I varnish, I can't do that. Um, so that's one reason I don't varnish. Uh, the other is the Smithsonian says that, you know, over time, a varnished painting can get, um, can get dirty. Well, if it's oil, that's fine because you can, uh, you know, you, there are ways to clean a painting. But with acrylic, it would damage the acrylic painting underneath. So I a lot of people varnish. Um, I just choose not to. Uh, Susan has another question. Do you mix your own turquoise or is it from a tube? I, I mix my turquoise with various uh, other blues. Um, I really like the manganese blue hue um, and, and mixed with turquoise to give that jewel tone. Um, but yeah, I have like a Cobalt, I use cobalt, I use uh, Blue Lagoon teal, and then I have, um, you know, aqua blue. This is, uh, and I just kind of mix it until I, this is, a, you know, just aqua blue is a little too baby blue for me. So when I use this, I like to mix it with um, more um, jewel tone blues. So the answer is depends on the painting. For this one, it was uh, manganese blue hue and aqua blue and, 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 and teal. Okay, another question. What is the name of the nickel gold? Oh, yes, my favorite. Okay, it's Quinara Vigiato here. Quinara Nickel as a gold. I know. I, I have seen that one. They have if you a, can pronounce the, it, you can get it. Queen Kedron. Queen. Yeah. Queen, and the other and the other one, which um, I really like, is the nickel azo gold. Let me show you uh, a painting I use with the that I I do figures on occasion too. And do you see, can you see that? Yeah. yeah, there we go. So this this is uh, some white and the nickel azo gold. And this is, you know, a, a mixed colors using both uh, cobalt and manganese blue hue and, and teal. But I love this color. It's beautiful. One more question is, how does she fin how do you finish the edge of your paintings? Are these canvases 1.5 inches thick? They are. Um, I, I have made the mistake of getting really thick gallery wrapped. This is gallery wrapped, but uh, the, I, I don't it's harder to, for me to store when they're too thick. So this is one and a half inches. And um, I finish it with using using a, a complementary color, uh, um, opaque color, and I use a brayer to to uh, to put it on like this so that it's very um, even. Uh, it's good coverage. So mm -hmm. I I finish it with so on this one I'll I'll probably use a Prussian blue. Um, and I use I use a fluid acryl acrylic, not so that it's easier application. I um 
how fast is just so dry and do, how how do you wait for each layers to dry yes well that's why i work around the canvas and then i'll go back uh, and it'll be dry by the time i get around this is dry uh, and so it's very quick and that's what i love about acrylic um, it if, if you're doing detail work it it could be a little frustrating for some but but as you can see i work i very i work very quickly uh, and so it, it's perfect for me. And um, so, yeah. Any other questions? For, uh... Yes. And if the gesture, gesso or the paint is not dry oh. completely and you paint on top of it, is there any cracking or shrink or something like that? Like oil? Oh, yeah. I, I always let my gesso dry 24 hours. You can't, you can't paint on a wet gesso. So um, yeah, I, I always do, I gesso my painting and I put it aside and I might get to it and uh, it's at most one day or two days later. So, um, but, but in terms of, of painting over, you know, as you could see, uh, sometimes I, I like the effect of putting paint over paint and it this was still wet and it kind of blends in but sits on top i mean i love that effect right there and so um that's what acrylic allows you to do especially the high flow uh it's so thin it it dries pretty quickly another question how long have you been at the torpedo art factory I juried in, in December, 2020, I was a pandemic artist. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, before that, I was a lawyer uh, for the government. You know, I've been painting a long time, but, uh, and I grew up with my mom, who is a very well-known professional artist, uh, but she encouraged all of three of her kids to uh, get professional degrees. She didn't want to support us for the rest of our life. So uh, I went to law school and was a lawyer for the Department of Justice uh, and the Department of Interior for many years. And then, you know, I think the pandemic came along and I said, I want to do what I want to do. And um, I was lucky enough to jury in to the Torpedo Factory and I'm just thrilled. Every day going to work is just wonderful. And I only live, you know, a block away. So my commute is great. I don't have to get into a car. Uh, life is good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I th any other questions? I think we're done. Uh, thank you so much, Karen. This was marvelous. It was such a wonderful presentation and we're, we are so thrilled to have you. <laughs> All right, Ch check out my final. Uh, it'll be put on Instagram probably uh, and you'll see it finished, uh, hopefully. Unless yeah. I paint over it. We would love to see no, it finished, no. yes. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.